Legend has it that when it rains for several days, it is because a dragon has left its lair in the forest and is flying across the river to the sea. This old story from the Casamance region of West Africa is no different from others around the world. The Amado, a dragon creature of the Andean mythology in South America, the Rainbow Serpent of the Australian Aborigines, or the Chinese Dragon, are all deities that control the weather. So let me tell you a story about our climate and the weather patterns that drive our lives. Because rain, clouds, wind, they all affect us. Our crops, our food supply, our drinking water. The very basic things we need to survive depend on a very delicate balance. An atmospheric cycle that repeats itself every year, but can change at any time. Our fate depends on it. No wonder we have looked up at the sky and wondered who or what controls our destiny. According to Chinese mythology, dragons control the weather and the seasons. Though most dragons are wingless, male dragons possess the power to fly to the heavens and bring rain while female dragons control earthly waters, like rivers, lakes, seas, and wells. In Japanese mythology, dragons are often associated with the sky and are considered to be powerful celestial beings. They are said to have the ability to control the elements, such as rain and thunder, and are often depicted as being able to fly through the clouds. And in Korea, there's a saying that goes, the rainbow is the trail of the dragon that has ascended to heaven. Today, not only can we reach the clouds, but we are learning to understand the processes that control the rain and other atmospheric phenomena with our own technology. Every summer, we get circulation patterns around Asia that can affect the globe. So ever since the satellite data showed that this large chemical signature in the upper atmosphere over the Asian monsoon, the community has been uh, working on uh, airborne research to study this phenomenon, study the region. So ACLIP is looking at material that has come up in the Asian region in storms, being vented upward. And then it's carried around in this, what we call uh, anti-cyclonic circulation. Or as you look down, it goes, the air moves around clockwise, but over a huge dimension, covering almost all of Asia, from Japan and Korea, all the way over to the Middle East. So the question is, um, what are the formation processes? How does it then basically spill out of the Asian summer monsoon anticyclone into the northern hemisphere. So in order to study this, we go way up into the atmosphere with our own dragons 